And when I did it, I tell them no grace. Today we're going behind the scenes again, answering your most common questions about how I use Insta360 cameras and I'm going to update you on some changes since my last video to how I use them in 2023. From the all new dual slash triple car suction mount system from Insta360 themselves, how both the selfie stick and the suction mount become invisible and if you've seen my previous video on this, stick around because the way I do things now has actually changed. How I capture audio without the wind noise and the editing software I now use, which for everything I'm going to show you in this video is entirely free. All these things combined to create Create impossible car shots that we use to make epic car vlogs. So make sure you check out some of our usual videos after this. I have to say a huge thank you to Insta360 for sponsoring this video and for being such a huge support to the channel ever since they saw how we were using their cameras way back when. And of course, over the years, how I use Insta360 cameras has changed quite a lot. So stick with me and I'll show you how I use them today. Now, most of what you'll ever need to do can be done inside the Insta360 smartphone app. It's very, very intuitive easy to use and there are a ton of ideas and creative opportunities your imagination is literally the only limitation and once you've exported the footage from the app you can use that in instagram tiktok youtube shorts and with the help of ai insta360's app helps you achieve effects in seconds that would otherwise take probably hours in any kind of professional editing software and you'll see me use these sometimes on sports and touring but also on another channel that i help run called jm and friends now in the early days, I almost exclusively used the Insta360 app to export all of my Insta360 footage. Whereas today, my workflow is much better suited to the Insta360 Studio software, which I run on my computer. You can set keyframes, choose pans, choose different styles of motion, or just choose fixed angles. I then edit that inside DaVinci Resolve, which can come in handy with the most common question I get, which surprisingly isn't how does the invisible selfie stick and the suction mount both disappear, it's how do I get rid of the wind noise? Now, firstly, you will find a wind reduction setting on the X3 itself. But of course, once you get up to higher speeds, that can only do so much until eventually it just gets overwhelmed. Now, my car happens to be um, a little bit on the loud side and at full throttle, the exhaust note somewhat overwhelms the sound of the wind. I'm not sure why. Really isn't that loud. So if I'm just using full throttle shots, I can generally just use the sound from the camera. And with some cars, the exhaust isn't quite enough. So I might even use a little bit of music to mask the flutter of the wind noise that starts to break through. But the best results come from recording the audio separately, which I'll often do using the Rode Wireless Go 2 attached to a Lavalier mic with a remote receiver attached to the Insta360 ONE RS. That will be mounted to the windscreen. Meanwhile, the X3 will be on the suction mount on the rear of the car. And then I'll sync the two clips up later and use the audio from inside the car rather than outside the car. And what that allows you to do is using software like DaVinci Resolve, which is entirely free for this purpose, you can create what's called a multicam. That allows you to combine multiple different angles and choose which shot you want to use for the video and for the audio completely separately. When you create a multicam, you can choose the option of using the sound to synchronize the two clips and it just does it automatically. But sometimes the software is going to need a little bit of help, so you need to give it audio from the two sources that makes it easy for it to match up. Now, one of the tips I got from my friend James from JM on Cars, also my partner in crime on JM and Friends, is that before you start the car, kick the cameras off, get them both rolling, then beep the horn, then start the car. And that spike in the audio that that beep creates not only makes it easy for the software to line the two clips up, it actually makes it easy for you to see that those two clips have been lined up correctly. But sometimes you want that raw exhaust sound and you just can't get that from inside the car. Now, what I've found works best for this is the Insta360 ONE RS with the 4K boost lens mounted on a suction mount on the bumper around here. It picks up an absolutely epic exhaust sound. Now, of course, if I've got an awesome chase shot facing the bumper, I don't really want this appearing in it. So what I'll tend to do is actually drive the road twice, once with the X3 providing the chase shot and a second time with this only providing the exhaust cam and the audio. 
and I'll even make a point of driving the road as consistently between those two runs. Same gear changes, same amount of throttle. Now, of course, it's not gonna be exactly the same, so you can't necessarily sync it all up. But what I can do is take the clips that I need, which tend to be relatively short of only maybe five to 10 seconds, and then find a good exhaust clip that I can use underneath that instead. And another way that being able to synchronize clips into a multicam can really come in handy is when you want to make your content just a little bit more engaging by cutting between multiple angles while, say, you're talking to camera in the car. I'll often have the Insta360 ONE RS with the 4K boost lens inside the car facing inwards. Meanwhile, I'll have the X3 mounted on the bonnet of the car with one lens forwards and one lens backwards. When I get back home, I can then export one forward angle one windscreen angle, all of these different cuts make the content just seem that much more engaging. And because they're all synchronized, everything that's happening just kind of feels natural and, and normal. And because you can shoot first and point later, you can get some really cool panning shots, which a lot of people will just look at and think, wow, how did they do that? Now, the shot that most people wonder about is that third person chase shot. And in my videos, what you'll notice is most of the time, you'll never actually see a suction mount. Now there's two parts to this. There's the invisible selfie stick, and then there's how, I make the suction mount invisible. Now there's one thing I will say about suction mounts because I see this on the internet so many times. People will use these really cheap suction mounts on their really expensive cars and honestly, it makes no sense to me. There's a few things you should never cut corners on when it comes to cars. Tires, brakes, and suction mounts. Now one of the first mounts I ever used was this triple suction mount. And whilst having these three different suction cups on the car certainly made it feel more or less secure, the problem wasn't really with its mounting to the car, it was to do with this part here. Now I've just had this a little bit loose just to make it easier to show you, but what would sometimes happen is when you go around corners at higher speeds, it would literally swing left and right. And that was a real problem. If you mounted it this way with the two suction mounts at the bottom and the single one at the top, that would at least allow you to fold this that way and then that would have a hard stop at that particular point. So under acceleration, it's fine, but then under braking, sometimes you get a bit of sway forward if you hit the brakes pretty hard. So what I used to do is I used to use cable ties around this to try and stop it from moving. And that really wasn't ideal. I then came up with this system using the Insta360 three meter extended selfie stick, plus some pro grade suction mounts and a nano clamp. Now, what this allows me to do is to create a really solid platform. If you see that, it doesn't really move that much. However, there are some circumstances where this just is quite limited. There's no adjustability in the height. You have to achieve that by either moving this back or forward to change the angle. And for a long time, I really wanted a solution to that problem. Fortunately, Insta360 came up with one. Now this is the Insta360 dual slash triple car suction mount. And I have to say the quality of this, the finish on it is impeccable. I absolutely love it. And complementary to this is the new action selfie stick, a lighter, more rigid, selfie stick. This, when in its triple configuration, is designed to work up to 100 kilometers an hour, so just over 60 miles an hour. And most of the roads I film on have a speed limit of 60 miles an hour, so this is perfect for me. What's cool about it is how configurable and adjustable it is. And the suction pads are pretty cool. They go onto a clean, smooth surface, and the pump action allows you to get those onto that surface very, very, very securely. And as you can see, these are quite rigid. The way you actually take these off is by sort of pinching on these parts here. And you'll see that there's this white section here. So if at any time it starts to lose its seal, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to see more and more of the white appear. That's probably gonna be because the surface wasn't clean or it had dust underneath it. So make sure you keep the surface clean, just like any other suction mount. Now this could be set up as a dual or a triple suction mount, depending on your needs. I would personally only run the triple mount if I'm gonna do any kind of spirited driving. But if you wanted a lower profile, then you might also want to try out the dual mount. And because of the adjustable arm, you can actually mount this in all sorts of places and get the perfect angle on either a chase or a unicorn shot, or go for something completely different. Setting up the mount I found quite intuitive with some assembly necessary, given how adaptable the mount is to both dual or triple layouts. Once set up, check the mount and thumb screws are secured and make any final adjustments. This piece here loosens, you raise it up, tighten it, and then that is locked in position again. And now you can have a much higher angle. Now in this particular case, I want something to come down a little bit lower than that. So I'm gonna bring it down here. And now that's ready for your X3 to go on the back. So as you can see, 
that is quite a decent amount of extension and with how wide the lens is you can actually get a really really awesome shot from that but the question is how does the selfie stick become invisible as you can see the selfie stick just gets lost in the stitch line between the two lenses either side of the camera. As you get further away from the camera, more things become visible to the point where you actually can't even see the line. And I'm sure there's some special software magic happening thanks to Insta360. But what they can't do in the software is remove the suction mount. So you might be wondering if the camera doesn't automatically erase the suction mount, where does it go? Now, even without erasing the suction mount, these shots are super impressive, but I personally like to go the extra mile in my edits, as you may have noticed while watching this video. And as I mentioned, the editing software I use is DaVinci Resolve. And while I use Resolve Studio, the paid for version, the key features you need are masking and tracking, which are also in the free version. This involves duplicating the clip twice. I change the clip color for the top ones so I can easily tell which ones I'm applying the masks to. Then over in the color tab, you select the area around the top part of the mount, track it, invert the mask, leaving a hole in that layer, and then back in the edit tab, adjust the clip underneath so a different part of the rear window shows through. For the triple mount, you need to do this again, although instead of cutting out a hole and letting another part of the car show through, I found that using the top clip to overlay another part of the car works better. This means moving the mask after you've tracked it, and then moving the clip so that it overlays on top of where that part of the mount is. And hey presto, you have an invisible suction mount, which for me, I think adds that extra wow factor to the shot. Thanks again to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. There's almost always a free accessory available via my link in the description. If you're watching this during the Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales, you'll get up to 25% off. And of course, please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, choose notifications on all videos, and I'll see you next time on Sports and Touring. Shot,